Good Minecraft morning and welcome back to another 10 minute tutorial. In this particular episode we're going to be talking all about the little bees and the beehives and the bee nests and the redstone components that can be attached to them. first block we're going to look at in this particular tutorial is the bee nest and the bee nests actually spawn naturally in flower fields and other areas you might be able to find them. I've just seen them in flower fields though and so the bees nest is actually going to house the bees obviously so you should see some bees flying around them uh, naturally spawning as well and if you come over and touch it at all, uh, hit it with anything then the bees are going to get pretty upset. They're not going to like that very much and they're going to attack you so don't do that. Uh, if you're wanting to collect one of these guys then actually what you're going to need to do is probably wait until it gets dark when all the bees go back into the nest or they're within I think it's 15 or 20 blocks away from it they won't attack you uh, then you can use a silk touch on it either silk touch axe or silk touch pickaxe uh, to to actually grab it and then it'll keep the bees inside it and you can take it and plant them in your farm or whatever it might be so uh, that's the first step you're going to want to do the next step is that actually when the bees are going in and out of this, they're going to produce honey. It will start to flow out of the edges here. I'll show you some of that in just a minute. But what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to use a bottle to actually collect that honey. If you use it again when the bees are nearby, they're not going to like that very much. So you can actually do a couple things um, to help that. One is to make sure the bees are far enough away, or you can use a dispenser, which I'll show you in a minute, or you can actually put a campfire underneath it, and that will actually make the bees docile, so you can actually remove the honey from it, uh, either by using the bottle for the honey bottle, or you can use the shears to get the honeycomb without offending the bees. The honey bottles can actually be used to craft into honey blocks, which are essentially the same thing as the slime blocks, uh, just a little bit different mechanics with those. We won't get into that too much in this tutorial. Or you can use the shears and shear off some honeycomb. Now the main focus of the honeycomb is so that you can recreate bee nests by making bee hives with honeycombs and wood blocks. You can also craft the honeycombs into a honeycomb block, which is basically just decorative. All right, over here I have a variety of different types of bee nests or bee hives in this case, and you can't see them very well. I can't actually open these up and break the blocks or the bees will escape and we don't want that. So what we've got is a representation of how much honey is in each one. So every time a bee goes in, they stay in I think roughly two minutes and then they'll pop back out whenever they leave. They actually increase the honey uh, output or the signal strength by one. So we can actually set a comparator. You can put it right behind it if you'd like. I just like to keep a block in between. Uh, that way it's all trapped inside there. So we can set a comparator behind here. And again, once one bee goes in and one bee comes out, it should increase it by one. And so you get a signal strength of one using the comparator output, signal strength of one. This is just the uh, an example of all the different levels of power that each one can have. And so this one had two bees come in and leave, leaving their honey behind, three, four, and five, so on and so forth. Now, visually in the front, I don't see much difference between the first four, so not much there. I don't really see anything different until we get to the full power level of five, and you'll see that it actually has a completely different look to it. The honey is overflowing. So you'll know that this one is ready to harvest. If you try to harvest using shears or bottles, you won't get anything out of these four. So you need to wait till it's completely full. So we can use this to our advantage to figure out how far out our signal needs to be before we can actually harvest them. So what we have over here is a very similar representation to what's going on over there and a couple different ways I'll show you guys and we'll have to toy around with some of this. I'm gonna go ahead and let the bees escape. That's no big deal in this particular area. So we again, we're taking a full honey output here, which should be five. And so we're going out one, two, three, four, and five. And you can see that a sixth one is there not being lit up. Same representation, but in this case, we're actually going to block it until it reaches full capacity. And so the way to do that is you can actually set up a, a lock system here where we've got a signal output going into the side of this comparator and it's locking it. So this comparator here and here are both locked when a signal strength does not go past this, whatever is in this chest here, producing the signal strength. In this case, what I have here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half stacks of honey comb. So nine and a half stacks 
and that will actually equal about four and a half worth of power supply coming out here. So this would actually not fire anything off this direction until it surpassed that. And that's what that comparator is doing there. So if you are wanting to set up some kind of lock system to where it does not sh show the power outage until it reaches this, then that's how many stacks you're going to need. You can also use uh, 16 stacked items if you want. I'm just not entirely sure how many you'd have to experiment with how many that would take. Uh, less than that, obviously. Okay, in this next little bit, we're gonna look at how to actually recreate a self-automatic uh, dispensing system to where we can get our jars, we can also get our uh, honeycombs and everything automatically. So this guy has no honey in it, so let's go ahead and grab one of these blocks that does have honey. Do you have honey? No, you do not. Do you? You do. So let's break you real fast. We'll toss that down there. And now what we can do is we can represent this as becoming full. So when it becomes full, you can see that the dispenser fires off the shears, just like you do in sheep farms, and it kicks these guys out. And it kind of kicks them out a little bit of everywhere. So let's look at the mechanics behind this. Pretty simple. We're just taking a comparator output, and we can go ahead and knock some of these blocks out so you can see it. But we're placing a block there, and we're having a comparator output that is reading a signal one, two, three, four, and five. This block is actually there to keep that from connecting. So if we actually allow that to connect, then it would just, it'd fire that dispenser at one, two, three, and we don't want that because it wouldn't actually do anything. So we actually don't want it to do that. Instead, we want to break that line there so that it has to produce the full one, two, three, four, five signal strength so that it will properly dispense that and catch it there. We can actually use bottles in here as well. It does the same thing. There we go. Okay, so we've got tons of bottles. So what we're gonna need to do is actually toss a lot of bottles in here. Everything has to have a handful of bottles in it. If you leave one open gap, then more than likely you're gonna end up with a honey bottle inside there uh, that will actually just get dispensed later on. You don't want that. It could cause problems. So fill it up with as many bottles as you can find. In uh, the, the world that I, in the adults play Minecraft world that I've been building this in, I just fill these completely up, 64 each, and then I go back and check them periodically. As long as you encase this in full solid blocks all the way around, and I've just got one block there, and I've never seen one pop over here. I've done this probably 400 times. I've never seen a single block pop over there, a honeycomb or bottle in that case. And so we could take all this out and put those shears back in there and show you. Again, as long as it's cased fully in blocks, they will always come out the front. If you actually put a glass block on top here, I've seen it pop up on top of the glass block. So you need full solid blocks all the way surrounding it like that to ensure that you don't get any uh, extra things popping out. And you can actually put a minecart, hopper minecart here. You could put a line of hoppers here going that direction. Uh, what I've done in the... Uh, Adults play Minecraft world is I've actually had some water channels going down in a collection system in the middle there. I love the use of item frames and locking the comparators and stuff. And so that's the design that I used for this particular project. So we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and toss this guy down here. Let's just move him over one. We'll put our dispenser right there and we're going to put our full honey block or honey nest. What is that called? A beehive, uh, beehive or bee nest on top. This one is actually full. So we're going to be a little bit tricky with that. So what we're going to need to do is actually come out of here, there, and we'll go here. And we're going to be reading this from one block away, like that. And we'll take a computer output. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip this next part. But I'm, what I normally do is run this right into a block, and then I put redstone dust underneath it so that it gets powered. I think I might need to make this a glass block, actually, like that. There we go. That should work better now. So our redstone dust will be right here and it'll flow through. I don't want to do that just yet because it'll fire it off. Well, you can just see there's nothing in this anyway. So fill it up with the glass bottles like that. And let's see. So we can see that it's actually fired off. It's full signal strength. So we can use that to our advantage now. But what I like to do is create a little hopper lock or not a hopper lock, a comparator lock. And so we can do that by using an item frame right here and we're going to put an item in it and we're that's one signal strength two three four five and that will give us compared to output of five which would be four here so this should still work but if we turn this one more you'll see that that redstone dust turns off down there 
And anytime this signal strength again, just like we talked about over there, this signal strength coming from here exceeds this one, then this will fire off. And so we leave it at one, two, three, four, five. Because it's actually firing five from here, minus one because of the distance here. So it's going four into the side. So as long as this is four, it will not fire. But once it exceeds four and becomes five, you get the full block. And so again, uh, this will pop those guys out just like that. And so I started a little collection system down front with some water troughs and things. And it looks really nice and neat. And you can just cover it in whatever you want. Uh, like all this here. So you don't get any extra things popping out the sides and the top and all that good stuff. I love the lock system. And the reason for that is it makes it much more compact. So when we're using this over here, it's not too huge. You know, it's technically only one, two, three, four, five wide. Not a big deal, but I just don't like this design. Um, it doesn't feel comfortable and you have to skip a little bit more of a gap with this particular design. You can load up another one right next to it. And so I can do another dispenser right here with another honey block or honey uh, beehive there. We can do just like this. We can have there and this comparator then is actually powering both of those and locking both of those. And so that's pretty helpful, but you would need to use glass here. So let's go ahead and do it how we would normally do it. That way you can see that this is a completely tileable, tileable system. There we go. Like that. Is that the glass I need? I think I need glass underneath here too. Like that. Oh, hello B. How are you? And we'll put a solid block there. Let's toss our comparator back in. And so again, it's taking a full signal output. We go here, here, and then we go here into a solid block and it will fire this guy off. There's nothing in there right now, but he will fire off. Let's go ahead and steal some of these. And again, we need to make sure we always have full there. Don't leave any open spaces. And if we just toss this guy back in, it'll reset that. And just like that. So completely tileable by one space. Uh, it's much more efficient and you can do this kind of over and over and over again if you'd like. So it's pretty nice, pretty handy to do that. Uh, I like the use of item frames. Love item frames. Check out my first tutorial ever, the item frames. It was kind of a junk one, but there you go. So that's it for today, guys. That's all I needed to talk about with these beehives. I really just wanted to show you the power output for those. And so thank you guys for watching this episode. Have a great day and good luck on building.